when I do not get the outcome that I feel I deserve, then it's quite possible that I've been bitten by the bug of politics. What if your manager is insecure? How do you deal with that kind of a manager? What is it that you can do differently to steer the direction, you know, in a different, uh, in a different way? So how do you take charge? How do you handle a manager who always is criticizing you in the name of trying to grow you? How do you manage a micromanager? What are the three strategies? It is said that people don't leave their companies. People leave their managers. I've been privy to a lot of internal conversations because of my work at large companies where I have seen what happens when there is favoritism? What happens when there is toxicity? What happens when somebody is basically just always giving constructive feedback? And today, we really want to focus on something which is really, which kills the very spirit that we have inside, inside our workplace, which actually makes us leave very, very established jobs, high paying jobs, the whole beast of this toxic environment, the politics. Uh, and, and, and what we'll do is that We'll make it, we're going to convert it into, uh, we'll, we'll make it a very free flow discussion where we'll be just sharing experiences and stories without names as much as possible because that we're not allowed to. Uh, but we, we, we want to make sure that at the end of it, you really have specific tools and strategies you can use to manage this beast of politics. And you can actually not only manage it, but win over it and it actually turn the tides around in your favor. Yes. And I, I remember that we have always told our clients that when your office environment is making it difficult for you, it is on you to take control. And in a way, I feel, couple, that we negate that there is politics, that there is somebody taking your credit, that there is uh, there are negative people, that they are jealous colleagues. We negate it all the time. But when I look back in my career, and I'm being completely honest, there have been instances when such people have been around me. So I do understand that it is upon us how to deal with it, but we cannot negate that fact. So yeah. in this in this video, let's make it more factual about how is it that, what is it that you can do, that we can do from our side to deal with such situations so that our workplace is not pulling us down, but rather lifting us up. And what we'll also do is at the end, we'll kind of do a rapid firing thing. I've just uh, thought about this um, and I didn't turn Shilpa so that, you know, um, so that she, she gets a bit surprised and it'll be like <laughs> unscripted. Um, but because I wrote it, she may, if, if I feel like I have to add something, I'll add something there. Or if she can't answer, can't answer, I will answer this. So let's, let's get into this beast of it. When we look at, when we look at politics, what normally comes to our mind is basically is that, oh, somebody is basically taking advantage of my situation. When you look at politics, it's like I'm being discriminated against. When you look at politics, it's like, you know, there are people who are jealous of my performance or I work like a dog, like a, like a horse. I'm working and working, working, and I'm given the most easy thing to do. Or I, people rely on me, but I don't get uh, the, the credit for my work. I, I, I basically, you know, I can do a lot more, but, you know, everybody else is not focused on the growth as I am. Or my manager is secure, or there's bullying, or there's harassment, or there is, there's, you know, mundane stuff going on. And, even if I make one mistake, it's kind of made very, very big. So, so, you know, so this is, this is that what politics is, politics really covers. This is what it is. But here's how I would like to define it. And, and I know that this could just, this could just immediately feel like, like a, like a, like a confrontational thing. But the moment you start thinking like this, you start gaining power back to yourself because your purpose of seeing this, listening to this is really to gain power over it, not to basically just get into a whining match. So when you look at gaining power over it, over it, the way to define it would be that when I do not have an outcome in favor of me, it is quite possible that I've been bitten by the bug of politics. That's why I'm not getting the outcome. I'll repeat this. When I do not get the outcome that I feel I deserve, then it's quite possible that I've been bitten by the bug of politics. You okay with that definition? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. It puts, let's 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 yeah. go with it. Let's yeah. flow with it. It puts onus on me partly. Now, having said that, definitely politics exist. 
Definitely there is toxicity. There is definitely jealousy. There is definitely favoritism. And we have all seen that. And I know that in my own career, whenever I look at people, one of my massive weakness, which I got feedback from a manager, you know, in my, in my, in my company that I work for was that I'm really good with A players, people who are really out there performing and then also very visible. But the moment it comes to other, and I'll, I'll have lunch with them. You know, I'll sit with them in the cafeteria. But the moment it comes to people who are really, in my own eyes, not really doing great, then I start ignoring them. So people who are not A players. Now, when you enroll the people who are playing their game, who are at their best, and you start ignoring the ones who are not doing it, it becomes politics for them. Absolutely. Right? So they are at the receiving end. So game is being played and you are looking at who is the one who is getting me the best yeah. output. Yeah. And uh, those people just cannot understand it. Yeah. They cannot relate to it. They cannot, they don't have access to the communication channel. They don't, they, they have no idea about what is going on in your head and why are you acting in a certain way and yeah. why are people who are close to you are, you know, in the, the way we call it, buttering you or, you know, uh, crowding around you. They just cannot understand it and they feel left out. Yeah. In fact, there, there's a story that back in, like when I joined uh, Cognizant, um, there was a, there was a, uh, there was a project manager uh, working in my team. And, uh, and when we had a bunch of freshers join and, and I, I immediately found my favorites, people who will just get things done, who have energy and I'm, I'm like a big sucker for energy. And this was like more than like 17 years back, 18 years back now. And, uh, and I found my A tribe. And then, uh, and this was the first time realization that what I was doing was wrong. Um, and I'm, like about six, eight, nine months passed, and that project manager once confronted me, saying that you're ignoring this guy, Pavan, and he is capable of outshining everybody just because he's an introvert, just because he doesn't talk. You're making a big mistake. And I heard him because I respected this guy. I heard him, um, and I started looking at this guy differently. And I found, man, he was amazing. He actually did <laughs> did the best possible job. So I know that inadvertently. I was playing politics because I was playing favoritism. And, but, and here, yeah. you were actually not playing politics. You were, you yeah. just didn't know. So there can be a manager in equation who has got a certain style, who either gives more importance to the people who need, you know, who need a helping hand, or just like Kapil's case, he's more attracted towards the people who are outstanding. And it just becomes a game, yeah. which is, which is not, it, it is, it becomes, um, you know, it's not a level playing field. It is not a level playing field. And, and so what I, what I, what I, what I mean to admit here is favoritism exists. And I improved. I improved a lot, 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 lot. Uh, but favoritism exists. Okay. Um, if a person basically who, so the reason it's important is because if you don't recognize that favoritism exists and you actually go try to fight a battle against removing all favoritism, then it's a losing battle. Because in that case, when you are a favorite, it'll be all right. But when you're not, you'll basically feel like you do not have the power to control the outcome. So that's one thing I want to make sure that, you know, when I define, when we define like this, that favoritism exists, let's put in this, it exists. How can you become a favorite? How can you make sure that you do not get caught up in this sometimes uh, in this game? Like, what do you do? Um, and and my my solution in this case, and because we're talking about a problem and I want, we're talking about solutions, otherwise we'll keep talking about problems, right? So my solution is that, build, connect with other people within the company. Like in this case, Pawan went out to this guy who was working in my team, the project manager who had more sway over me because he he was literally my right hand man and he could say things to me. So he made him understand. So instead of trying to fight a losing battle, you fight a winning battle by creating personal brand and helping other people who's just your operational manager or lead understand your capabilities. You know, obviously if you're just one level up manager is doing this favoritism, then it's a different ball, ball game. So I'll ask you, Shilpa, how would you handle it if it's just one level up person who's actually doing a favoritism and you don't have you don't have anybody else to actually influence this person? Right. So before we get there, I, I'm wondering how do we get into the losing side of the battle for mm -hmm. politics? How do we end up being there? And when I look back in my career, I remember saying so many times that I'm too simple. 
I'm not made for politics. It's not my cup of tea. I cannot butter. And we still get people who yeah. come, you know, people who want coaching and they come on the first <laughs> call and they say, you know, I'm not that kind who will go and butter the manager. I don't do that. As if people do it. People are ready to jump onto it. So we use these words which are degrading and we make politics a beast that we want to keep away from. It's bad. You know, we, that's what we tell ourselves. And now when I look back in my career, I've realized that it was not the politics. It was my me telling myself that I'm not made for it. Me feeling incompetent for it. You know, I didn't have the capability, nor the desire to deal with it. And because I didn't have the desire, I didn't take efforts. I was somebody who was always sitting on the side of the arena, watching the people play the battle, their moves and all those things. Some things I understood, some things I they didn't make sense to me. So what I realized is as the king or the queen of your territory, you need to know how to navigate your environment, your workplace. If you don't know it, then you will be on the losing end. So first of all, stop saying that politics is bad. It exists, yes, but you know, you can really play a fair game in that. You can really be grounded. You can just be authentic and try to understand, you know, establish relationships where you are part of it. You're in the thick and thin of it. And whether it is leveraging your manager, you know, leveraging your manager to understand what's happening if you don't uh, get any sense of it, or whether it is um, going and having coffee catch-ups with different people at different times so that you understand what are, what is this grapevine? What is this? What are these informal forms of communication that is happening, which I'm not part of? So I would say Fridays, half day on the Fridays, spend time for these kind of catch ups where you understand what is happening, not because you want to be uh, you want to play it against someone, but because you want to be in the thick and thin of it. You want to be an A player there and you want to have a better hold over it and not be a victim, but actually be an active person in that. Yeah. So and, and, and so what what I get out of it is that if you if your manager is actually, um, you know, in that place where the manager is playing the favoritism part and you do not have anybody else, then what you do is that still build relationship within the team and peer group as well. And maybe maybe the managers manages, maybe maybe the managers peer group where you build, connect and relationship, a general relationship. And I it reminds me when I when I came to Australia, I was like, I had zero experience of handling client. I mean, I had some experience of overseas handling client, but it's very different when you're here. And and one of the things I did was at uh, at News Corp, which was one of my clients, is that I started actually having conversation. So I'll reach office um, and uh, I'll just put my bag and then I immediately go and start talking to a lot of people and, and just go and spend time with them on the desk. And I built up this connection with people. So when things would go wrong, where you could easily be called as a hey, vendor, you did this particular thing, because that's also like a politics, right? Who would we blame? And they didn't blame me. They did not because they had connections and relationship with me. So, so yeah, so the solution to that is really building deep connect with people. Is deep connect and opening the lines of communication to you so that you are not somebody who's sitting in a silo and other people, they don't have access to you. So being part of the game. Also, I would say it is an opportunity if your manager is playing favoritism, why? You know, nobody does it out of malintention. You know, mm. why is, why is this happening? Is it happening only with me or is it, does he have only one or two as favorites or is it happening only with me, right? So if it is happening only with you, maybe there's an expectation mismatch. Maybe there are certain things that you're not doing right. So again, it boils down to having an honest conversation with yeah. the manager, with the people that you see more around him and with the people who are there not trying to take sides, but to just clear your mind on what is it that I focus on that can make me stand in the, as with him. Yeah. And look, one of the things this Chilva reminds me when she said this, that every single person wants to be successful. You would agree with that, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> Raise your right hand, right hand. Yes. Yes. Every person wants to be successful. So people will actually align with somebody who makes them more successful. And if you can make your manager more successful, if you can work in a way, that you can make the manager more successful, he or she is going to get aligned with you. I remember having conversations with clients where I said this specific statement saying, with clients, my job is to make you look like a hero. 
and this person would never go against me no matter how complex a meeting was i remember having conversation with my team members that the only way i can be successful is if i help you become a star so these team members will never go against me you know i had conversation with a manager saying you know what can i do to help you out and i would never ever be sideline or anything so i think this is this is a great point so moving on to that 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 thing also brings out this point um, so i just want to tell you tell people a quick story about this alignment with manager because we're talking about alignment long back like 2003 when i joined microsoft i was in a new manager meeting i was like the pretty much the first time manager before that i was a lead so i was went to this went into this new manager meeting in in hyderabad and there was this uh, the head of finance was there and that that lady did like i think she there was like a three day session or something like that and she was amazing and she said that uh, she said that when i was shrini shrini was the head of microsoft uh, india at that time and she said when i was shrini in a in a room and we were talking about certain situation i have had fights and altercations about why it's a bad plan i have stumped out with my like on my feet and walked away in like anger and everything but outside i always showed a common face to the team and everybody else even if i disagreed with him inside and 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 she said that you know one of the things i learned is that many times there are three four things possible a the manager is not sharing something with you not because they don't want to you know it they just don't know it's important if it's important second they are not sharing something with you because they it's a confidential information you know and third they really don't think that you deserve to know at this particular point of time whatever is the reason so this became a massive mantra towards my alignment with my managers it really helped that inside the room i could have argument with them about rating about promotion and everything but outside i will never say hey i wanted to give you an ea man you know those people in the room they did not i would never say that and i did not do that and as a result the relationship and trust and connection that i have with people was amazing so alignment with your manager is actually the number one strategy that you can that you can implement it change everything and we have a lot like few more that we want to talk about but this is the fun thing yeah you know? so what you are saying kapil is that you can have all the disagreements inside a room you yeah. can put your point forward you can challenge your manager but when you come out of the room with a decision if you decide i'm going to buy a bmw then you go and buy a bmw you yeah. don't keep in your mind tesla that you did yes. that fine yeah. right basically yeah she doesn't she she's not allowing me to buy buy a tesla that's that's where it's coming from really like you know so 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 it's a great yeah awesome so let's move to the second one which is what if your manager is insecure how do you deal with that kind of a manager Yeah, mm, I remember, and this is like a very hard thing to even think about. I remember that um, it was in Microsoft days when I ended up having uh, I had a great manager, but then a consolidation and aggregation, and also because there was a strategic nature of the work that I was doing, which I was not paying the I was not best at. Um, there's somebody else who came into that place, one of my peers, and uh, he was extremely insecure person, and he had. to actually create a position very fast with the new set of people and prove to the the you know center of the universe which was redburn back then for for people in microsoft uh, that you know i can handle to sub as we use to to business unit and his insecurity led to behavioral elements of my own self which did not do very well and as a result i got eventually fired and like all from microsoft there were there was politics like you always i have always heard you negating that there was no politics it was my performance and i know it was performance also because of the mess it ended up creating and the lack of interest and all but there was some politics behind it right there was there was there was that politics of insecurity it was it was basically that that instead of i could call it malintention became that because of his insecurity he wanted to prove prove himself to everybody else he ended up actually you know canning me in and it impacted me negatively um but if you have a situation so what would yeah, you do yeah, if today yeah. that situation arises again how would you handle it differently yeah i i will be completely completely different if i if you know if i had a insecure manager i would actually spend time first and i know there lots and lots of things the very first thing i look at again my manager is insecure because either their job is at risk or they have to prove something to them to 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 the organization or uh, or they have certain biases against me because of my behavior and my emotional element and whatever it is what's the core reason these people are insecure because they think they can't meet meet their objective 
You know, bottom line, somebody is insecure because they think they can't meet their objective with you in their side. So they actually try to push you away. So if you understand what makes them tick, what makes them successful, then it's a lot more easier battle to win. You can have a conversation with them. You can actually blatantly ask them, hey, I see my role, which I wish I had done. I didn't do it. I see my role as making is helping you be successful. And it's really important for me. So what are the things I can do? How, what kind of a pressure I can take away from you? Or how do you define success? When you have these kind of conversation and not in like an office setting where you're sitting together in this thing, right? Take them out for a coffee. It's like a magical thing. And I learned it from Shilpa actually, but it's a magical thing. Take them out for a coffee, have a conversation at a place which is not a usual place because in a usual place, there is um, these anchors that we have, correct? Where I sit, work. The big chair he has and the smaller chair yeah. that you have. Yeah. And, he's tall, yeah. she's yeah. tall and you know, you're know you short or, or, or she's gorgeous and you're not and all those kind of things, right? So there are anchors. So you get out of the environment, you suddenly become equal and you're having conversation like people. So so I know that um, like, you know, uh, when people are insecure, when you have, when you, when, when you, when you have, when you have a certain way in which they deal with you, have a conversation. So Kamal, there's another element to that. When I think about insecure manager, for me, it is someone who doesn't have enough confidence in their own capabilities, in their own, own, you know, whether I can do it. I'll be there. <laughs> yeah. And they're going through an imposter syndrome. That's one day the people who report to me will find out that I don't know anything. So uh. to deal with those kind of managers, I believe, I mean, it is difficult because in your mind, you know that they don't know enough. And I've seen some people saying, be very, very brash with them and saying, you know, I can take that person's job. You can be that or you can come from a place of empathy, knowing that the person is there because they would have done something, something right to be there. Maybe at this place, the time is tough for them. So coming from, from empathy, coming from you being a human, you can... You can actually enroll the person in the journey. You can educate yeah. them. You can, uh, you know, have two things. One is to understand what are the challenges. And secondly, uh, invest time in more one-on-one -on -one interactions with them. So that make, make them feel comfortable that you're not competing with them. Yeah. yeah. Because I kind, of, I kind of remember the story when, when I, I remember getting this guy who was amazing in every single way possible. And he made me very comfortable that he was not in competition with me. It's a big thing i i know exactly what you yeah. what you're saying so you're not there to take their position no. you do things in an agile manner together working on the next steps so that even if the person doesn't know things in the beginning by you being his you you become kind of his counterpart or her counterpart and you coach the person so that they become efficient and they become yeah. actually fit for the job that they are doing yeah. And you know, so when you think about it, what do you mean by I'm, I'm going to coach my manager? Actually, yeah, your manager is a source towards your success. The manager, what they're doing is towards your success. So you better, better manage the resources accordingly. So, yeah. And not to forget that they have the power, right? They are in that power position. Yeah. So they have the right to make decisions. If you become their ally, then you can leverage that power position to nudge towards the decision that as a team. Yeah. You and should be making. So I wanna I wanna also talk about the entire mindset that we have to bring across the across the table. Um so so start what do you think are some of the things that people have to keep in their mind when they're dealing with these these toxic situations? So first of all, you need to really know, know it it's a gospel truth that things are in your control. So it might be wrong. You know, others might be doing things which don't sit well with you, but onus is on you to get it right. No one will do it because everybody is subbed in that. But what is it that you can do differently to steer the direction, you know, in a different, uh, in a different way? So how do you take charge? Because those people will never change. But if you start acting differently, if you start taking responsibility, they will start responding to you differently. Yeah. And the fact that you have the power to control their response, that will put you in a proactive position. 
Yeah. And, and and look, this 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 does not finish without a story. That part, right? I I and I'm a story person. So he, so one of the things that happened is that I was working for a different business unit, and I changed the business unit, and I said I'm going to go into this new business unit because the manager of the business unit was a really close personal friend of mine. And once I became a director at Cognizant, I wanted to change. So I was talking to him. I said, Hey, I want to change. And he said, Yeah, do you, would you work for me? I said, Any day. I'll work for you any day. So good. Okay, you know, I tell my current manager, my, my then manager, and he said, yep, okay, I'm, I'm going to be supportive of that. Good. So I'm moving to a different business unit. And then um, and then I hear this political bubble starts coming up. But politically, I heard that. So one of my, my uh, so I was in a vertical team and I was going to a horizontal team. And in the horizontal team, you always have a point of contact who basically services your need in the vertical team. So this person who was serving my need when I was in a vertical, he said to me that, Kabil, you know what? That other guy who basically manages this particular part of the business, he's the political beast. You have to be careful about him. He has got our manager's ear, your new manager's ears completely. The new manager, that like my new manager, his manager, he said he listens to him on everything. And he knows everybody in the organization. So he's the one who was, you know, when I could not give you resources, Kapil, it was because he was stopping me because he'll take everything for himself. And I'm like, okay. Now, I had a choice at that time. Whether to go against this guy and show my, you know, the designation muscle because I was one level senior to him. Or actually to realize that because I respected my manager, my new manager, that my new manager is not an idiot. He's not going to listen to this guy, this this political beast guy, unless he had actually has power inside him. So I understood that part. Second, I knew that he would not have all these connections within this massive 33,000 people business unit unless he was really good. So I tapped into that. I literally went to him and said, hey, mate, can you be my mentor? No, it's like, oh my God, you got, a, you got a mentor who was one level junior to you. Oh, you know, I asked him to be my mentor. And then as, as things happened, he really helped me a lot. Um, and, uh, and eventually... When I, like, in about three, six months later, I want to, okay, like, you know, initial level deal because, you know, Cognizant also in the beginning was like a, like, you know, in a small account, you had like a body shop and company. So we got some like five position. And this guy actually got his best resources to come and work for me. Talk about politics, right? Completely turned. He got his best resources to join my team. And on top of it, that's success. We kept on building up. And every time I went to him, he got me the best resources and we kept building up. And eventually, we won a $100 million deal in the year. It was all because of the great work that the team did that he provided. So, the story doesn't finish here because I'm also a good guy. <laughs> you know, I have to prove it. You know, so we, after we win the deal, there is this mail which goes out to the BU head, you know, 30,000 people, team head and everybody. And my name is the, at, the, at the top, you know. And because this guy would come, the, this, this other political beast, he was in a different business unit. Nobody's naming him. My name is all oh, constitutions couple and all this. I reply all. I add him to this thing and say it wouldn't have been possible without him because he helped me. And this is how it works. You can actually take these people and you can change. go on a war with them. If you know somebody's in yeah. a in a position of authority, you can get threatened by them, or you can just join hands yeah. and make them win. And yeah. that win feeds into your win. And yeah. some people might think it's a very long journey doing this and then, you know, the win coming to you. But actually, this is a shortcut. Yeah. This is a shortcut. For it's you. a good shortcut. It's the yeah. ethical shortcut. So, you know, the two things is that A, you can always turn people in your favor. And B, I wrote it here, uh, given importance of the inform, un, un, um, informal pathways within the company. If somebody is able to tackle through the organizational, you know, politics and navigation hierarchy, that person has more power than you realize. So you tap into them, make them your friends, really make them your friends. Like this guy became a great friend of mine. He always trusted me, never played any, any gimmicks and politics with me. You know, he might take a knife and butcher other people if for all that matters. And, but he never did that to me. And, you know, and I could get it that actually that's the best way to manage that. What you focus on becomes a reality. If you focus on people's negative, it'll become a reality. So that's one mindset that I think it's super critical um, for us to have. The second thing is that remember that if people do not get what they want, if I don't get what, get what I want, it's very easy for me to say it's because of politics. It's very easy for me to say. Like I remember that uh, when I came to Australia, I was just about to come to Australia in back in 2008, it was, 
and we had this this new account and satyam fiasco happened and every company every customers is then saying what is your board member constituents right show us your, are you are you guys how are you manage as a board as a company and uh, my client my new prospective client like 3.5 million dollar deal which was huge for me um they're asking can you tell us how is your company structure and i reached out to the head of communication for cognizant at the time and he didn't respond back and i was like why did he not respond back it's so important i'm sitting on top of deal reminder he didn't respond back so anyways i somehow managed but my perception was this guy is really a bad guy man you know he is not good and then next thing i hear another like 6 months later he's promoted to a uh, vp level he was a director became a vp and i was like man politics sucking up to the bosses and i gave those kind of explanations and then i get to know that he's become svp in the next couple of years and i was talking to my mentor about it in the company and uh, and he said hey kapil do you think there's a chance that no actually no i was talking to my coach about this later much later he said do you think there's a chance that that person decided not to focus on your business because it was too small cognizant at that time was 1.5 billion dollar company and they had other clients who were like 100 million plus they had to prioritize who to respond to and this guy was a busy guy and that prioritization is what he did he chose that his 100 million account then against my 3.5 million possible deal and it makes total sense so the other lesson is that if i don't get what i want i'm going to actually say that you're not aligned with me you're playing politics you yeah. build these stories which are not true and i remember there was a an instance where i was at the receiving end so there's a new person <laughs> who had come in my team and she was uh, she would go she would immediately respond she would go talk to everyone and i was like <laughs> this person is playing politics with me she's sidelining me and then i realized that she was doing all the right things i had put myself in a competition with her and i was actually second guessing myself and it was a very short stint just one or two months but in those one or two months i had the best lessons of my life because i realized all the things that i was doing wrong and all the things that she was doing right yeah so so, so in nutshell really what we're saying is that the more you take responsibility the better it will be but we understand there are some realities of life as well um that that we'll talk about shortly in terms of like you know the 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 health fire questions and say how do you deal situations like that and just before we get there another thing is that 99% time you can handle everything in this particular approach but that 1% we will handle shortly yes yeah really for it super yeah okay here it goes and if she doesn't answer then i'll answer i'm like yay i won <laughs> right okay so how do you handle a manager who always is criticizing you in the name of trying to grow you All right so that happens quite a lot um so the first thing that i would do is to understand the expectations more often than not there's an expectation mismatch so understand the expectations second have an honest conversation about why is it happening is there something that is um that is built up over the years so that you can tackle with it and thirdly i would set up a communication rhythm with that person so that i know that i am i'm talking to the person at the right rhythm taking the feedback and meeting the expectation rather exceeding it as we go so three things expectations secondly clearing off the air which has built up from the past and mm-hmm. third establishing a communication rhythm which works for both awesome and that reminds me of another another fourth one which is basically that uh, your manager has objectives certain things that they want to achieve and they you have taught them to talk to you like that because they're worried about not meeting those objectives they are probably criticizing you they may have somebody who's their blue eyed boy or a blue eyed girl and they want you to be like them and it also reminds me shilpa very quickly is that the story that we had that this lady amazing like one of our best client we can't name her obviously here uh, but she said she actually used the word b word for uh, one of the person that she was working with she said that person has been my life hell for all these all these days all these years and all of it um and when she had that conversation that constant criticism and everything went away and that same manager who had made her life hell for 3 years promoted her in a month so these kind of things are possible right second how do you manage a micro manager what are the three strategies so firstly understand that they are micro managing you because they don't trust you enough 
So you need to establish the trust. These are the managers where you have to immediately over deliver, you know, exceed the expectation so that you establish the trust. Secondly, set up, set up a communication with them and uh, give them updates maybe twice a week, daily or twice a day so that they are off your back for that time. You know, they wait for the updates and they are constantly across what you are doing. And thirdly, let them know that that by not micromanaging you, they are freeing up their time for something more productive. So make them realize that. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I actually don't know much about it because I never had a micromanager. Okay, third, how do you handle people who are jealous of others, of you, of others, of, of, of gossiping and doing stuff to undermine everybody? How do you handle them? So first thing, have an honest conversation. Most of the time, people don't even realize that this has become their way of life, that they're backbiting, gossiping, talking negative about, about others and all. So, uh, so have an honest conversation. And more often than not, this will work, provided there's only one rule that you don't blame them for it. The moment you start pointing figures, they will become defensive and won't go anywhere. So be the polite one to tell them that this is what they are doing and do they intend it to be this way. Second, if it doesn't work, your honest conversation, then establish your boundaries. You don't want to be sucked in with all those gossiping and jealous conversations mm -hmm. and all because otherwise it will rub on you as a person as well. Thirdly, what you can do is start appreciating that person in public. There's a reason why they are doing it. They are very insecure and they feel that this person is better than me or that person is better. So start applauding them for their strengths. What is it that they are good at? And you can by this flip flip turns and uh, get them by your side. Yeah. And, and, and look, one of the things that would happen in, in this case is that People who are really jealous, they are insecure. We've talked about it in some way or other. Like people, they're, they're really jealous. They they have either a self-worth issue or they are in your in they're in that place where they could get fired um, or they could get be into problem. But one of the things that I've seen is that we train people to deal with us in a certain way. I remember this story of a client, um, and this was such a big example of what could go wrong. Um, this client, um, I remember having a conversation. Like we, we would have those quarterly business reviews with them. And in one of the business reviews, the offshore delivery manager, manager did not turn up. And, um, and he did not turn up. And, and you know, and the next day I went to the client office and this vendor manager just said to me, you know, I'm really upset. He did not turn up at all. Um, and it was really bad. And I said, oh, actually, I came to talk to you about it because I found out last night because I was also concerned that um, his um, his dad's hand had to be cut because of a problem. And you know, it's like such a shocking thing. And this guy looks at me and says, man, you Indians, you always have some problem. And I, my mind just went like, boom. And I just got up and I said, and I was, I remember I said, I said remember. when you're in your senses, we'll talk. And I left, and I left. And as he came down the, uh, the you know, the, the lift and everything, and I'm coming down the stairs and then I get a call and he apologizes immediately. I have a conversation. All that happened. Sure. Happened. You know, and then I was also like, hey, this is like a, not even a person I want to talk to, right? Bad bullying behavior. And then, um, and I, and, and, and then I, and I used to have a coach back then. Um, so I asked my coach, I spoke to my coach about this and my coach asked me this amazing question, which changed the way and it changed literally a lot of things. He asked me, do you think he has got family? I said, yeah. He said, do you think his family likes him? I said, probably no. He's like this person. He said, do you really, you, you think his family likes him? I said, uh, sure. I think he's probably nicer with their family. He said, why do you think he's nicer with his family? I said, and I'm starting, my mind is starting to then work. Um, maybe because uh, that's how he deals with them. I said, why do you think he deals with you or your team badly? I said, because that's what maybe he thinks he deals with. He has to deal with us. So I went back and I had a conversation with this client and I asked him, hey, is there a, like a thing about it that you feel that you have to be a little bit strong, stringent with the one, with the with your vendor partners? He said, yeah, because the company, we have had a lot of issues with the vendor partners and you guys are new and I need to keep you guys in those. Pretty much that's what he said. And I immediately got it. 
and post that our relationship went to a different level and it really helped us a lot. So again, onus is on me to understand, even if there's behavior is really very bad behavior, um, you know, onus is still on me to. And we trained them, as you said, you didn't create that boundary. You trained that person to to talk to you like that all all his life to not only you, but to all the vendors they had in the company. Because I, yeah, because I, because I accepted it. I could have been like, boom, right? Um, And that, that brings us to this last thing, which is about how do you manage a bully? A bully peer member, a bully manager, what do you do? A bully, I mean, this one is a very different kind of battle. But firstly, you need to tell. You need to tell that person to yeah. back off. And you need yeah. to clearly use the word that you are bullying me. Yeah. And this Literally. is, I don't take it in good spirit. You need to really, just like I'm putting a hand in front of me and stop. saying that, stop. Yeah. You know, and sometimes people realize and the word bully is... You know, it creates an alarm nowadays, people back off because nobody wants to be a bully. But if it continues, then, you know, leverage your manager's help. Yeah. You know, it is it is always good to uh, to get people involved when you encounter a bully. And uh, if still it doesn't work, then HR is there. So yeah. HRs take bullies very, very seriously. Yeah. So there's no way that you need to tolerate a bully in your workplace. Yeah. And that brings us to the very last question that you've done everything. You have had a good mindset. You have had communication. You had an alignment. You have made them successful. You had a conversation, everything done. But you still are in an environment which actually seeps the energy out of you. which just squeezes all the, like makes you want to pull your hair. What do you do then? Well, what you do, and I have my take on it, is to quit that place. Because there are a lot of times when you have a lot of baggages, on those baggages create this problem and you're not able to let go. You could change a team. You could complain. Everything can happen. But if you're just not satisfied, if you're not happy, do not stay there because these things, these kind of things do not just impact your workplace. It also impacts your health and your relationship as well. So there is a time to know when to call it quits. Absolutely. And but not, but no quits until you have taken these steps. You know, sometimes it looks like a big problem, a big cloud of problem. But if you focus on one thing at a time, one problem, one solution, one problem, one solution, you'll be able to break it into into steps that you can deal with. Yeah. And at the end of it, if it doesn't work, your own mindset, your own life is more important than any work that you do. And you have worked in the industry for a long time. You just don't have to tolerate it if things are not working. There are better places waiting for you who will value you for who you are. Well, thank you so much. That brings us to the to the end of this uh, entire session. Uh, uh, you know, uh, depends on what channel you're watching it on. Like, you know, like, subscribe and ensure that you put some comment there for us to take feedback about it. What is it that you would like to like us to talk about? And where is it that we can help? Uh, you know, we can help bring value your corporate life in a journey um, in your corporate world can be more peaceful and more happier and more more joyful and and you're feeling alignment with that place uh, you know it's so critical so thank you so much appreciate your time thank you